Good morning, church. Why don't you guys all stand up with us and let's worship the Lord. And come on up front. Don't be scared.
two to three new people, you can find your way back to your seat. My name is Chantel, and I'm one of the volunteers here at the church at South Edmonton, and I am so glad that you decided to join us for church this morning. If this is your first time here or your first time in a while, I want to encourage you to get connected. There is a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. You can fill it out, bring it to the hub, which is the desk outside the main doors after the service. We want to get to know you, your story, where you're from, what God's done in your life. Amen. And once you have done that, then we can talk about serving opportunities. If there is something that you have on your heart, you want to get involved, you want to give back, you can do so fill out the connect card. There's a couple of ways you can get involved. We have midweek groups that go on throughout the week. You can get involved Sunday mornings. You can serve in children's ministry, come on. And speaking about serving, if it's on your heart, there is another way that you can get involved with what the church at South Edmonton is doing here in our city. And that is through your generosity. Generosity is one of the big core values that we believe here at the Church of South Edmonton. We believe in principled living, and one of those principles is giving. God has been so great to us. He's been so good to us, and he gives us more than what we need so then we can give back and be good stewards of those things. If that's on your heart today, you can give a couple of ways. There is a booth set up at the back, ready to receive debit, credit, cash, check. You can also give through an e-transfer, give at thechurchsc.com or through our website. If that is on your heart today, I just want to pray for you. 
Father God, I just thank you for who you are and for what you do. And Father God, your praise will forever be on our lips. I just want to pray right now, Lord, that you would touch the giver, the one who is giving out of a place of desperation, out of a place of faith, Lord God, that you would see that and that you would intervene and you would send a miracle immediately, Lord God. I also pray for those who are giving out of just spiritual principle, Lord, that their investment in the kingdom would not return void in Jesus' name. We thank you for all you have done for us and all you are about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a house of worship. This is a place of
darkness now is ended in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light now from the lips of the forgiven hear an anthem you're the king of my life you reign above it all you reign above
Happy Thanksgiving. Of all the things we're blessed with, we can be thankful for. The greatest gift of all is Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He to
Stefan, can we do that, just the voices? For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. So we give thanks. You guys may have a seat. So like I said earlier, my name is Chantel. I'm one of the volunteers here at the church at South Edmonton, and today for our Thanksgiving service, we have a very, very special service. This is not like any of those other services. Do we have any WWE fans in the house? Okay, so this is a church, so it's nothing like that, okay? So just, you guys can, there's the door. No, I'm just kidding. I want you guys to be a little bit gracious with me today because I'm getting over a head cold. So this is my Delilah voice. No? Okay, settle down. So today we have, we get to introduce three speakers. And these three speakers have been working on their gifts that God has given them. And we've, when we see here at Case, we like to find people who have been given a calling on their life. And when we see that, we like to kind of chip away at it and mine out the gold. So we have a speaking team here at Case, people who have been hand-picked, where we recognize that talent, and we like to give an opportunity for those people in a safe, loving environment to kind of have the, a go or take a hand at it. And so today, we get to hear from three different speakers. We call it our three for ten. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight as to what this is going to look like. Each one of these speakers has been working on their message, and they get 10 minutes each. We're going to have a timer up on the back wall. Oh, you just ruined the surprise. (laughs) He put all three. I mean, they look great. Okay, so I was going to introduce them, but now you guys already know, so that's all fine. 
So they get 10 minutes each, and when the timer goes off, that is it. That's what they get, because we're going to be respectful of other people's time, as well as the meal we have next door after the service. We don't want it to get cold. All right. Now, one thing that I need from you guys is your encouragement, your cheer, your whoop whoop. Can you help me out here? Let's practice. Go. Yeah, okay. That was okay. Um, I just want to let you guys know that in order to get up here on the stage is completely frightening. Most people would rather die than public speak. So the very least you could do today is give them a big whoop whoop. That's better, that's better. Okay, okay, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. This is supposed to be a great service, a fun service, and even all of the goofiness and laughing aside, I believe that God is going to speak to someone here today. His word is gonna go down deep, and it's gonna bear good fruit, amen? Okay, Brennan, without further to do, a do, do, do. I'm ready to introduce case speakers. First up, our first speaker is heavenly on the keyboard, but today he is singing a new song on stage, introducing Stefan Arti. And number two, second the best, she looks sweet, but don't let that flower in her hair fool you. She's got the word of God like fire on her tongue. It's Tracy Kimo. And our third and final speaker, David may have killed Goliath, Daniel closed the mouths of lions, but our third slays our youth group. It's Derek Coo. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to get started. Number one, would you guys please give a warm welcome to Stefan Artis? Awesome. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? <laughs> you talk about making you nervous, all that intro was like, bah! <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, today we're going to only have 10 minutes, and so it's actually really hard to take all your thoughts and everything you want to share and cram it down to 10 minutes. But just that, I'll try not to speak too fast. Okay, so if anybody was here, most of you were here last week, Pop shared about water. And I really like that, like Dad said about water, it's just like it's, it's we we're filled inside it, right, what God gives us. But God also gives us gifts. So I have a nice clicker here. Gratitude is a state of being thankful, grateful, we all know what that means. I want to show the battery because this is like our giftings that God gives us. I love music. And some of the other guys, like Nathan, who's amazing <laughs> at hockey. Like my other bros there, who's amazing at MMA fighting and stuff and jujitsu. Some of Ray's great at just like so many things and giving love and serving here at the church. And with a smile on his face the whole time. But if we, lay, if we lean inside of those giftings that God gave to us, it's good for a time, right? Maybe fun for a time. But the truth is, we're just human. So this happens. That's what happens when we're no longer rooted at the source, right? It's a baddie. It's got a lot of power. Like I'm wearing these packs, right? Like my iPad, bam, it's 15%. It's going to die because it's not connected. So it's like us when we're not rooted in Christ. We're not rooted in that. When we're, when we're standing in ourself and our own arrogance, we put ourselves on the throne. And so going over to the next one here, I think a good point is to begin and end each day in gratitude. Because I believe firmly where there's gratitude, there's soil for growth. When we begin in humility, from a place of receiving, we're rooted in something, someone more than ourselves. 
So we have to take the control out of ourselves first, right? It's like that awesome Carrie Underwood song, Jesus, take the wheel, right? You got to let it go. Give God the control of your life. Amen? Amen. And coming down next, I think important thing to do, and these kind of go really against like our societal thinking of today. Start by knowing that nothing is owed to you. Nothing. Right? We all got, we all got pride. We all got power. Right? It's like... I am somebody. All those things are good and well. But in our heart, we have to know for a fact that nothing ultimately is owed to us. Everything we are is because he is and because he did. All those years ago when Christ came and he died on the cross, he died for every single one of us. And like the, Bible, like the scripture says, we were all sinners. So like ain't nobody perfect. This is a really cool sign on the, on the entrance you come to church. It's like no perfect people are allowed, right? Well, hint, hint. Everybody's here. Awesome. So, <laughs> so anyways, I want to put some things we're thankful for. Grace, a new day, family, church, country, history, lessons, and trials. Everything on there is really easy to be thankful for, except for the last one. <laughs> All the time we're not, really, we're not really thankful for the trials. But I'm going to talk about some things. I know we're talking about grateful. I'm going to try not to go too much. Because we got 10 minutes. <laughs> but we go over here. We're going to talk about, um, if my clicker's working, the scripture. My brethren, count on all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I put the ESV version on there as well, because I really like something that says that. It's like, count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds. Count it. The other scripture that talks about it is because, you know, like this is really, I'm also going to like paraphrase the scripture and just do this meme. If any of you guys have ever seen this meme, it's pretty cool. Not all memes are garbage. Some are good. <laughs> and this, one is a, this one is a picture of a, a coal, like charcoal, and of a diamond. And it says, they always remember that a diamond is just a piece of stone, a piece of charcoal that did good under pressure. So through the trials, when you allow God to, to work and refine you, you come out an amazing, beautiful diamond, truly finding your purpose. But in order to do that, you have to let, them, you have to let the, the powder do its work. And I'm going to jump ahead. Say that again. I thought I heard something. That's nice. I'm like moving around and walking out of range over here. Here, there's a cool saying. I like martial arts. I go for the awesome family, music, martial arts, and all that stuff. This is the awesome samurai quote. And it has to do with a lot with battle. It's like, engage in combat fully, determined to die, and you will be alive. Wish to survive in the battle, and you will surely meet death. The way of Bushido is to be found in dying. When you go into battle and feel like, oh, I need, to, I need to live, you're worried about your life and everything, there's no time for that. You have to be fully committed, prepared to give your all 1,000%. But before the samurai said that, and they were some awesome dudes, before they even said that, somebody else did. You know who that person was? Oh, who said it? Somebody always beat me to the punch. <laughs> Jesus said it. I'm walking out of range. I'm going to have so much fun. It's maybe this battery. Can somebody back there help me out? Just go to the next slide. Here, I'm going to just go from the part, first couple of verses on that. Now, great companies, great crowds accompanied him. And he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and not hate his father and his mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now, a lot of times I ask the question, does Jesus ever tell us to hate anybody? No. Now, this passage, a lot of times we misunderstood and be like, yeah, Jesus told us to hate. So just, what, is, what is he talking about? He's not using the term hate in the general way that we use it. What he's talking about is similar to that last quote we just read. It's about... Love that we have to have the respect for the father, for our master. A samurai without a master who does not, does not respect his master, he is no longer a samurai. He's a ronin. The same way when we no longer respect and follow our father, we're no longer standing in faith in Jesus. Now we're standing in ourselves in our own fight. And I would tell you, my friends, brothers and sisters, it will truly lead us to failure, to death, and to hell. I'm going to jump forward to the next slide. I feel like my internal clock's going. I'm like, Stavon, you're running out of time. No, I'm just going to call it. Can you give me the next slide, please, uh, Margo? The next slide we're going to go to, go to the next one. I have Paul says, Jesus, Jesus says, Paul says, and John writes. Go forward again. You'll see these three quotes here. And I really like this. 
Each of these break it down, what Jesus was just saying, and explains that, that metaphor in a more deeper way. Jesus answered in John and said to them, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. And Acts, Paul says, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall come before, that shall befall me there. Again, those who don't know it, this is Paul. He died in prison. But we have so many of those scriptures that he wrote because he did not get lost in the track and focused on his own life. How should I break out of this prison? How can I fight somebody? How should I rebel? And he was just like, God, what do you want me to do? God, you have me here. Lead me, Jesus. Show me what you want me to do, Father. And because of that, we have so many amazing books. I'm going to jump ahead now to the end to finish. Go on for it. I want to bring it back around, back to gratitude. If you can jump me into my, uh, you'll see a white slide there with, uh, with brown on it. Go back again. Back one more time. There we go. When we believe, each day in gratitude. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf shall also shall not wither, and whatever he shall do shall prosper. That's like the tree, right? We had that battery. It's like the battery. And we showed that uh, video earlier where the battery was there and it was draining and it's dead. When we're connected, we're like that tree that's planted by the root of the water. When we start our days and we commit to a place of gratitude, we know that it's not because of who we are, it's because of who Jesus is, because of what he did. Then we go through each situation saying, God, use me. Just like Paul, show me what I can do. We come with a grateful heart, like that song we sing. And when we come with eyes that are open and seeing the blessings that God put before us, you'll be surprised all the amazing things you have. So with that, I want to close. God bless you guys. Okay. Wow, you still have a minute. <laughs> Does that mean I get his minute? <laughs> All right, my 10 minutes isn't starting yet. Hi, everybody. <laughs> what a nice son in law. <laughs> he gave me some of his time, which is so nice because, you know, usually I'm up here with Kelly and, well, I don't have to say anything else. <laughs> So anyways, I'm really excited because um, I get to do this all by myself. <laughs> anyways, I love Kelly, wherever he is. I love you, Kelly. Well, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving today. Although I love celebrating with turkey dinner and pumpkin pie, with ice cream, of course, Ron was supposed to be here today to hear that because he knows that I love ice cream. Um, I'd like to focus on Thanksgiving as a way that we live our lives. And so the first thing to know is what is the definition of Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is the act of giving thanks, grateful acknowledgement of benefits or favors especially to God. An expression of thanks especially to God a public celebration in acknowledgement of divine favor or kindness, a day set apart for giving thanks to God. It's quite an interesting fact that even the dictionary has defined the word thanksgiving, that it mentions it being in the relation to God. Okay, so even, like, it, I, I think it's just amazing. I mean, when you look up the definition, there's other, you know, things and stuff like that. But these particular ones, it's just amazing. Praise the Lord. So what are the effects of being thankful? Maintaining a thankful attitude boosts dopamine and serotonin, the brain, neurotransmitters that improve your mood and give you positive feelings of pleasure and happiness. Optimism and positive emotions strengthen your immune system while pessimism and negative emotions weaken it. Being grateful reduces negative emotions, such as envy, hatred, and anger. Being thankful 
increases positive emotions such as love and empathy, giving you feelings of happiness and well-being. Gratitude is a special gift given to us by God. Gratitude fundamentally is fundamentally about not taking things for granted. It is being thankful for what we have and for what we receive. Thankfulness is a powerful means of drawing near to God. The Bible mentions thanksgiving several times. Actually, a lot of times. <laughs> thanksgiving is a key to something greater than just being thankful. It's actually something with tremendous power. What is the power of a thankful heart? It gets our eyes off ourselves and back onto God. It reminds us that God is the giver of all good gifts. We were never intended to be fully self-sufficient in this life. A grateful heart reminds us that God, he's our provider. With the heart of thanksgiving, we realize that no matter what life throws at us, God doesn't only work to change our circumstances and help us through our problems. He does more, much more. He also changes our hearts. His power through our hearts of gratitude and focused minds on him releases the grip our struggles have over us. I'm going to read that again because that's really powerful. Let's get that today. Okay, his power through our hearts of gratitude and focused minds on him releases the grip our, our struggles have over us. Thanksgiving increases heaven's atmosphere, his holy presence in our churches, our homes, and our families. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, it tells of when King Solomon had summoned for the ark of the Lord's covenant to be brought into the temple. The priest brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary called the Most Holy Place. Verses 13 and 14 reveals what happened next as the musician stood on the east side of the altar. 2 Chronicles 5, 13 to 14, I chose the English Standard Version. And it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord, and when the song was raised, the trumpets and the cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, okay, now catch this. As Kelly would say, you're not going to believe this. This is awesome and amazing. <laughs> the house was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house. Now, hearts overflowing in unison with praise and thanksgiving are hard for God to resist. God inhabits the praises of his people. Okay, can you imagine being in an atmosphere just like that, where the presence of God is so thick that we can't even stand or continue with what we're doing? Well, I know I'm up for that. Is anybody else? Come on, let, let's have that. Thanksgiving is an essential part of prayer. Giving thanks is an essential part of prayer. It's a power tool which leads us into peace. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Colossians 4.2 says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the will of God for your life. Thessalonians 5.16.18 says, rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Even when we're not sure... What's next on God's agenda for our lives? A thankful, contented heart demonstrates our trust in God's sovereignty, keeping us in the center of his will. And it's not always easy to give thanks in all circumstances, but it's God's will, and it's good for us, right? What is the result of choosing to live a thankful way of life? Beyond giving God the glory and praise to which he is rightfully due, one of the greatest things about thankfulness is that it is a choice. 
We can choose to be thankful. And the more we choose it, the easier it gets. The more we profess our gratitude for our blessings, the more that we notice things to be grateful for. Thanksgiving changes our attitudes. Thank you very much. Thanksgiving changes our attitudes and our actions. It's how we live. And others notice. And it's contagious. Living a life of thanksgiving is a great choice that we have been given to choose. God's word is filled with many reminders of how powerful and essential a thankful heart is in his word. If it wasn't important, he wouldn't have mentioned it so many times. And like I said before, he's mentioned it a lot of times. In closing, with faith, let us thank God in advance for all that he has done and all that he's going to do in the days, in the weeks, in the months, and in the years to come. Because there is tremendous power in thanksgiving. I encourage you to meditate on these verses and all the others on a regular basis and focus on giving God thanks in all circumstances. I know that our lives will change for the better because of our thankful hearts. He deserves all the praise and all the glory. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Awesome. Well, something funny has happened since I opened my iPad to go to my notes. Uh, they're not loading, so this is going to be off of memory. So it's going to be wonderful. Anyway, um, I just, uh, Thanksgiving. You know, we heard from Stevan and Tracy about what Thanksgiving in is and what having a heart of gratitude does. And when I just got to say, I am, I am overwhelmed with thankfulness for this church, for the church of Jesus, because we are all, when we are part of this church, when we're part of the body, we are all connected and we are all one through Christ. And, you know, if, at, at Thanksgiving time, um, put your hands up if you ever did the thing where you go around um, the table and say, like, I'm thankful for this. Um, and, you know, many things, we have many, so, much, so many blessings, so many things to be thankful for. You know, we have family, we have... Um, you know, our jobs, shelter, everything that we need, and God gives us those things. But I got to say, the thing that I'm most thankful for, and I need, to be, I, I need to remind myself of this all the time, is what Jesus did for me on the cross. Because it was through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross that we can have not only perfect, uh, that we can have a perfect relationship with him. And not only that, that extends to our relationships with each other as a family, the body of Christ. Um, so yeah, just uh, we're, we're going to dive into um, some scriptures, scripture. So t um, yeah, and Jesus, Jesus tells us, Jesus talks to us um, about what he thinks about relationships um, with, with him, God, and also each other. Matthew uh, 22, 37 to 40. Uh, and it's hard to read. It's a sharp angle. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Our relationship with God and our relationship with others sums up all of Scripture. Oh, thank you. Wow. So nice. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, um, Jesus cares deeply, and he teaches us about relationships. Because he wants us to be close with one another. In John 17, verse 20, um, through 23. I do not ask these things only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So when he says, asks for these only, he's talking about his disciples at the time. 
But then he goes on and, exp- and expands that beyond just his disciples. But anyone who believes in him through their word, through their confession of their faith in Jesus Christ. That they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus, this is Jesus' prayer for us. He asked his Father in heaven, he desires for each and every single one of us to have not just a relationship with God, but the same relationship that he had with God his Father. And like if we just I can't even fathom what his relationship with his father must have been like. Perfect unity. They were one. And then he goes on. Um, Jesus prays further in verse 22. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And verse 23. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So God not only prays and desires for us to have a relationship with him that represents the same relationship that Jesus had with his father, he, can, he relates that relationship to the relationship that we are supposed to have with each other as followers of Christ. And when we, when we grasp that, when we understand that, it changes totally the way that we see church. It changes the way that we see our friends, our family. We become one body. And that was, that was the image that Jesus was trying to teach us, is that his church is not divided. His church is not, it, it, when it's strong, when it's unified in Christ, nothing can prevail against it. One of the, one of the best ways um, that we get to practice unity with God is through communion. And in communion, we are, it is the very act of ingesting, taking in part of Jesus. Because in scripture, when Jesus, when Jesus is, is participating in the Last Supper with his disciples, he doesn't say, this is, the bo- this is the bread and this is the wine. It is like my body and my flesh. He says, it is my body. It is my flesh. Do this whenever you think of me. And so we're going to participate in communion uh, now um, as a church body. Because when we participate in communion together as, as a church, as people, together, unified in Christ, we are able to experience and practice unity because through Christ, nothing can divide us. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to participate in communion. If you did not receive or, or if you didn't grab the elements that are at the back door there, um, if you just put your hand up, uh, some pe- somebody will bring one to you. Um, and, yeah, we'll get started. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul is describing the Lord's Supper to the Corinthian church. And he he tells the church, um, he gives them instructions on how to do communion, that it is something for those who have given their life and totally surrendered it to Jesus because they acknowledge Jesus' sacrifice for them. So I'm just going to read. For I have received from the, uh, sorry, it's 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, 
that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. So if you have the wafer in your hand, just um, break it. He broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, Jesus took the cup. And this cup, the blood, the blood of Jesus is covering you. It's a covering. A complete and perfect atonement for your sins when you acknowledge who Jesus is and what he has done. And in this, so in the same way, he, Jesus took the cup after supper saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you, uh, as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let me pray as we close. Father, thank you so much for sending your son. We cannot help ourselves when we, when we see and understand what Jesus did for us on the cross. We cannot help but give thanks. And God, I pray that we turn our eyes to you, that we hear your words that are written in scripture, that you came and died for us so that we can have perfect relationship, unity with you, and by extension, unity with each other in the church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Derek, Tracy, and Stefan. Would you guys give them one more hand? Yeah, stand up. That's good. They did so good. I am so proud of the team and the talent that has been gifted here at Case. God is good. Amen. Amen. I, and even like Derek, I can't believe your notes didn't load. Like what a rookie mistake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, that's so good. Well, in the last couple of minutes that we have left, you guys may take a seat, but we'll wrap up. I wanted to read to you guys the story of Jesus and the lepers. And the scripture is not on the screen, so you can take your phones or you can take your Bibles and you can turn to Luke 17. Verses 11 to 19. I'll say it again. It's Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. When you're there, say, I'm there. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, he was met by ten leopards excuse me, lepers, who stood at a distance and list, lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went on their way, they were cleansed. One of them turned back when he realized that he was healed and praising God with a loud Voice, he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving Jesus thanks. This man was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Where are the other ten? Excuse me, where, where are the other nine? Were there not ten cleansed? Was no one else found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? And he said to them, rise and go your way, because your faith has made you well. See, these group of lepers, they were infected, diseased, sick, outcast from society. 
the law said that they were not allowed to reside in the town because they were seen as unclean. They weren't allowed to share in turkey dinner with their loved ones in, in risk of infecting them. When Jesus passed between Samaria and Galilee, these lepers were likely a mixed group of Jews and Gentiles. And they had come together knowing that the only thing they had in common was their misery, their sickness. An unusual group of people who typically despised each other, but they were bonded. So they came together, and when they saw Jesus, they prayed together in unity. They asked for healing. And the only condition of their healing was their obedience. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. As we go down that commanded road, we receive the commanded blessing. In this case, it was healing. But only one came back to give thanks to Jesus. And he was the unlikely one. He was the Samaritan. And though he was only one, he gave loud thanks. See, all ten were willing to do the religious ceremony. All ten were willing to obey, but only one returned to give praise. External religious exercises are easy enough and common enough, but the internal matter, which is your heart, it's the drawing out of your heart in thankful love. Nine obeyed the ritual, but only one praises the Lord. And Jesus made it known that they were missed. He said, where are the others? This proves the value that he sets upon his service of praise. He's looking for it. He wants it. He desires it. It makes you wonder if he's frequently asking that question. But I healed you. But I performed a miracle but I saved you. Where are the others? A theologian by the name of Trapp says, Christ keeps count of how many favors men receive from him, and he will call them into a particular account thereof. Jesus said to him, your faith has made you well. See, this was an extra blessing for the 10th leper. How is this an extra blessing? Well, it was the healing of the heart. It was a spiritual heart condition. God's work was made complete when that one guy turned around and gave praise to Jesus for what he did. The other lepers, they had whole bodies. But that one, he had a whole body and a whole heart. Ten healed, but one gave thanks. See, giving thanks, like Tracy said, gratitude, it releases something over your life. And Jesus said it releases that extra blessing, that extra thing that you didn't know you needed. You didn't know you wanted it. You didn't know that it was in store for you. And Jesus wants to release that blessing over your life and say, here's a little extra. Not only was he physically healed, but because he gave thanksgiving, his heart was changed also. You guys can stand to your feet. We're going to close. And I want to pray a special extra blessing over your guys' lives. 
So today I declare that we are a people who gives thanks, who gives thanks loudly, that we've been freely given new life. We've been given access to the kingdom. We have been given more than we deserve freely. And I declare today that we will be a people of gratitude, of thanksgiving, of joyful praise. May your name forever be on my lips. If you believe that today, say amen. 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 I want to leave you with the benediction before we head over to the building next door. If you know it, you can say it with me. If you want to receive it, just hold out your hands. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Father God, I pray for your people today that your blessing and your extra heart changing would come upon them, Lord God, that we would be a people that recognize what you've done for us, Jesus. We love you. We pray that you would bless the food next door, that you would bless the hands that prepared it, and that we would have fantastic conversation in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes, it is true.